So this next video covers how to do box plots. Uh, and this is part of my Learn R with ggplot series. So you'll want to watch histograms and scatter plots if you want a better concept of ggplot overall. This video only covers box plots. So box plots are, I don't think are quite as popular in psychology as they used to be, um, but they're still good plots to know how to make uh, in case you're looking for a specific type of outlier or if your data is uh, really skewed, a box plot can show you the median and the 50% uh, interquartile range, and that would be a much better depiction of your data than, let's say, a bar chart of the mean, because uh, skewed data is much better represented by a median score than the mean. Um, so the box plots are made up of a box and a whiskers, and I have all this information here on how they work, um, but I think that uh, the picture shows them much better. So let me make it a little bigger. There we go. So here's an example of a box plot. So the line here across the middle is the median score. So remember that's the middle score. The upper and lower quartile, so it's 25% and 75% here, show the middle 50% of the data. So this gives you a good idea of what the range of most of the data is. And traditionally we show this to people by doing the mean and the standard deviation because the mean plus and minus one standard deviation is in a normal distribution is technically 64% of the data, so 32% on each side. <clears throat> um, but in truly skewed distributions, most people do interquartile range, um, and so that gives you the middle 50% of where most of the data lies. And then the, the rest of the whiskers part shows the, uh, the rest of the data range. So the very top of the line will be the end of the data, now these little dots on here are uh, out traditionally considered outliers. When we get to data screening, we'll talk about how a better way to do outliers, but I think they're um, 1.5 times the interquartile range here. So they're very far away from the median, given that this is the 50% of the data. Um, <clears throat> so they're kind of a quick and dirty way to see if you have some extreme scores. You can also use histograms for this uh, same idea. It's just that this gives you the exact median and middle 50% without you having to calculate it. Okay, so we're going to calculate a box plot. You can have a box plot with just one variable, so just one dv, um, but then a histogram is probably a little better. So box plots are also really great if you want to split by a categorical variable because it sort of gives you a double histogram in this sense. Um, <clears throat> so I have males and females on um, in this particular picture of a box plot. So let's make one. We're going to use the festival data from the Andy Field book and uh, calculate people's day one hygiene scores. If you haven't seen this data set, they calculated the hygiene of people going to outdoor music festivals and rated them from zero you smell like a rotting corpse to four you smell like roses on a wild sunny day or something to that effect. And we're going to put gender as the aesthetic variable. So that means we're going to split on gender. All right, so I've got a lot of this set up already. Um, so be sure you load the ggplot library. I'm going to set my working data here. I've already got this data set ready to go because I made a histogram with it before. So I'm going to pull that data in. And so I'm going to call it festival. Now here is um, some code that I'm going to use here in a minute. I've talked about this in both of the previous videos, so I'm not going to go over it too much, but essentially what I've done is I've taken a bunch of theme coding. And so theme coding allows you to control the colors and the background and um, basically the ugliness of these plots because naturally they come out very kind of hideous. And I've uh, coded it all as cleanup. Um, you can code it as whatever you want, but I've saved all of that code as one word so I can use it easier later and I don't have to keep typing this whole paragraph here. So essentially what it does is it turns off the grid lines, major and minor, turns off the background and adds me an uh, axis line. So I'm going to run that as well. And then let's go down here and just make ourselves a new plot. <clears throat> so we're going to make a box plot. And to do that, I have to start with my um, creating a chart, a blank space to work for this, to work in. So I'm gonna call this festival box. So the code is ggplot. That's the <laughs> build me a blank plot code. You have to have the data set name, so it's festival. And then my aesthetic here 
is going to be um, gender because the X axis goes first. And then make sure this isn't capitalized. Yeah, your gender here. And be sure your variable is already listed as a factor. That'll make your life easier. <clears throat> and day one. So they do have to match the names over here. So that builds me a blank box plot. You can see there's no layers in it, so it is blank. Now let's add stuff to that box plot. So let's say festival box plus. Um, now I'm going to stack my code because it makes it easier for me to see, but you can make this all one giant line. Let's add geom box plot. That is the code for a box plot. So let's run just those two pieces together. So I've got my blank festival box uh, that it tells it here are the variables I want to use. Now add a box plot layer. And that should give us a fairly ugly box plot. This is the same data set as the histograms video, so you'll notice we still have this crazy outlier. So this is a good way to go, hey, the scores range from 0 to 4, and there's a 20 in this data set, and that's not so good. But that's not the best plot in the world, so let's clean it up. So I've added G on box plot. <clears throat> now let's add X and Y axis labels. So X lab for X axis label. And I've got my hygiene of day one. Let's add a Y lab for the Y axis label. Uh, that's going to be, it's not frequency, it's, um, that's a histogram uh, hygiene score. Right. <laughs> so I actually got this incorrect. Let me try again. Hygiene of day one should actually be our y-axis label, because that's what it's plotting over here. And our x-axis label is actually gender. Festival uh, goers. So let's run all of those lines together. <clears throat> so now I've got my gender of the festival person and my hygiene of day one. Now let's make this less ugly, so I'm going to clean that up. And then that's a pretty good graph. Um, if you wanted to relabel the uh, codes here, you could refactor your variable, or you could use scale x discrete, because it is a discrete scale. And then if I can remember off the top of my head, I think it's labels. Ah, go away. Never remember if it's name or labels or values. Let's go girls and boys. Just show you how this works. Boys. Let's run that whole thing. See if I've got it right. There we go. It is labels. So now I can change those labels down here if you didn't have them typed in proper case or if you wanted to use something a little longer with spaces but um, you didn't want to use spaces in your factor variable. So that is actually how you make a box plot. It's pretty easy. Um, you can make stacked box plots. Um, <clears throat> and to do that, I would tell you to add a, a color or a fill variable to the aesthetic piece here. So there'd be one more variable out here. It's very similar to what I did for the scatter plots, which is in a different video. And I'm also going to cover how to do that sort of thing in the bar, uh, bar chart video, which will be the next video. So this is just box plots and how to use them. Um, and so we've created a box plot and it should look very similar to uh, the notes here. And then that's my box plot. <clears throat>